Hi, welcome to some dumpster diving, teardown slash salvage time. We've got some uh, various office phone and internet uh, protocol IP phones here, courtesy of uh, John who sent them into the previous mailbag video, which I'll link in down below if you haven't seen it. And I um, scored this one from my uh, dumpster here in the EEV Blog Towers. It's a Panasonic one. So I thought we'd just open them all up uh, quite quickly, won't be very thorough teardown, and see uh, what's inside these things and see if there's any usable parts. Because you might be able to find these, you know, a company shuts down or whatever, uh, they just tend to toss these things out all the time. So is there anything worthy in them? We'll find out. First up, this Panasonic one that I found, model number KXT7433, and it's your typical, uh, you know, system PABX uh, type phone you might have in an office, lots of, uh, you know, pre-dialed numbers and stuff like that, and, you know, it, it does a few things, but nothing particularly uh, fancy at all. LCD display we might be able to salvage, and it even tells you, there it is, digital proprietary telephone, made in Malaysia, this sucker. Let's crack it open. Here it is, pretty much what I expected, all uh, single board construction, we've got the lever coming down here, looks like to a micro switch down on the board like that. I've got ourselves the uh, microphone down here, you could rip that out, that's for the speakerphone system. Look, the uh, jog shuttle thing here, nice little optical encoder on its own PCB there. Very nice, we'll salvage that out, get the speaker of course, and most of it, you know, most of the stuff on here, eh, not, you know, hugely uh, salvageable, but you'd probably keep a board like that for, you know, some SMD uh, rework training or something like that. Um, you'd get the flat flex out of here, we'll get the LCD out of here, it's probably like a standard uh, Hitachi chipset one perhaps, we'll have to have a look at that, but uh, yeah, you know, there's a few salvageable items in here, that's for sure. That's the optical encoder board. It's a Mitsumi. Very nice. Very usable. Standard electric mic insert. That's a keeper. And the board just unscrews out of there. The matrix and the uh, LEDs, surface mount LEDs to light up the individual keys over here. All surface mounted on the bottom of the board and directly on. True single board solution in that phone. Very nice. Only a double sided uh, layout there, that's really all they need. Um, you know, you can forget the chips, these are all sort of uh, proprietary jobs, you know, don't even worry about uh, trying to salvage those. That micro switch over there was nothing of the sort. It was, uh, you know, not like a standard little one you can desolder or something like that, a lever based one, unfortunately. But yeah, you'd keep that board for um, maybe some parts for salvage or uh, SMD training. You might get some regulators out of there or something like that. And it looks like we might have ourselves some bicolor SMD LEDs there. You can see how they manufacture these keypads here on the little uh, lever arms there, all part of the one big plastic frame. Look at that. That's, uh, you know, uh, once you've got that uh, down uh, pat on your assembly process, that's a very uh, cheap and efficient way to do it and get nice, um, you know, a tactile or uh, well, nice uh, spring feel on your keys. And here's the LCD module. Uh, it's a rather curious uh, 16 character by 3 line display. And yes, it is standard uh, Hitachi uh, 44780 uh, standard, but unfortunately the connector over here, weird ass, uh, you know, fine pitch, like a uh, 36 pin job, so not standard pin out there, but you could certainly um, hack into that and uh, drive that display. And it's got little uh, buttons here as well, I and mean, that's presumably why they've used a larger uh, flat flex there, larger pin count, but you might want to uh, keep those as well. In fact, I would uh, keep this entire thing because it has the buttons and everything else, so I'd probably keep that entire assembly. Check it out. It's even freestanding. What a Bobby Dazzler. And how about this Telstra one? Very similar to the Panasonic one uh, in terms of use that we just had, and then this, this one, made in Australia. Beauty. And here we go. It's actually a Nortel phone. Uh, look at that. Attention to detail here. Look at the padding they've put in there, the dampening material for the speaker there, just to uh, yeah, improve the acoustics a bit. Nice attention to detail. Aha! Standard header going to the LCD. That's what we want. Beauty. Um, you know, uh, still all SMD single board uh, construction. Nortel chipset here. You know, you might be able to sam you know, there's a uh, might be able to salvage some transformers or something else on, but basically the same as the Panasonic one. Got ourselves a LCD on the back here. It's going to be a custom LCD, but we've got some 
Zebra strips, look at that. Definitely keep those. They're always handy because they're difficult to get um, just uh, for, uh, you know, generic uh, use like this. They're, you know, you pretty much have to salvage those. And once again, same deal. It's all integrated, double-sided uh, PCB. Um, you know, don't need multi-layer. All custom Nortel chips there, whether or not they're full ASIC or whether or not they're, you know, something else. It wouldn't surprise me. Nortel are huge. Things like inductors are always very handy to have in your junk box. So, you know, these are nice through-hole ones. You'd probably suck those out. A couple of uh, SMD ones over here, you might get those out as well. Maybe some of the electrolytics to throw in your kit. I mean, there's a 1,000-volt uh, 16 mic low-profile electrolytic. You can see how they've just gone for the uh, single uh, key construction. They haven't moulded those into a frame at all. Ooh. Two line by 20 character standard Hitachi display with ribbon cable. Ah, oh, standard point one inch header. Beautiful. Definitely reuse that sucker. Next up, this Polycom made in Thailand. Soundpoint IP phone. There it is. Connects to your LAN PC. You probably could still use this as an IP phone, but well, you know, I don't really. I use an IP phone at home, but I've already got a wireless system. So let's crack it open. Looks like a 20 line by 4 character display. Beauty. Well, this one's not as built down to a price point as the previous ones. I mean, uh, look, we've got, um, you know, a separate uh, membrane uh, keypad over here with the uh, membrane flex. We've got some uh, flex cable going in there for the contact, the, uh, the uh, handset contact up there. Look at that. So, you know, it's, it's a bit different, but yeah, you definitely uh, keep that board. They've got a header up there, some sort of uh, programming, oh, programming slash uh, production uh, test header or something like that. Pulse transformer, nothing else hugely uh, salvageable in this thing though, but as I said, you can still use it as an IP phone if you wanted to. Well, there's a surprise, a TMS320 DSP. Go figure. And we've got a KS8081 Ethernet switch built into that, so that just ties into our TMS320 uh, processor there, and then we've got our pulse transformer and uh, the uh, miscellaneous um, paraphernalia to interface to your Ethernet connection. Uh, what I thought was a programming production header is actually a board-to-board -board interface, and it's a bottom uh, entry. There we go. There's a standard uh, header. So there's our... Look at that! Beautiful! Standard 4x4. Uh, uh, 20 character, as I said, um, LCD module with the standard uh, header pinout going to a female uh, pin header receptacle in the bottom of the board. So you'd actually, that would be a keeper. You'd uh, maybe uh, suck, maybe remove that sucker, but ah, oh, the LCD, beautiful. We just pop that out. It's like a bought one. So they've gone to a bit more trouble there. They've got a custom metal backing plate on this thing, which is sharp, by the way. It can cut you uh, quite deep. Slice me open there. What a bummer. But, uh, yeah, they've gone to a little bit more effort there than the previous phones, which were just, uh, uh, you know, the carbon tracks on the back of the PCB. And this module on the side here was just designed to slide in to the side of the case here. It's got a big, what looks like a big graphic uh, LCD, bunch of soft buttons, probably for a, um, you know, a soft dial directory, uh, quick directory type function. And there's a fair bit of guts in that. Check it out. A bunch of reverse mount, uh, surface mount LEDs there. Yeah, the blood's getting a bit worse. Ah, no worries. And uh, it looks like it's a two-wire interface. This board just slides out into contact in the other side. So power and data goes across that two-wire interface. Really quite neat. Got an Epson uh, LCD driver there by the looks of it. And uh, not a huge amount more. So these are the same uh, reverse mount LEDs. They just uh, shine through a hole in the board. Exactly the same as I used in my microcurrent here. Just drill a hole in your board, shines through. Neat solution. And that's a neat solution because you can mount all your components single-sided load. Instead of having a top mount LED, you'd have to run through this board a second process through your pick and place machine just to put your LEDs on the top side. That costs you time. That costs you assembly line time and money. And sometimes you can you reuse uh, little light pipes like this. Always um, handy just to have a little uh, part straw filled with these things. You might be able to hack them into some product. And that two-wire system looks like it's cascadable too. This plugs into your unit over here, and then another one can plug into here, and so forth. Not how many. Not sure how many you can plug in, but uh, yeah, that's rather neat. And that Epson part's actually a fairly beefy 32-bit uh, microcontroller, but you know it's not like you'd reuse this. 
there it is you could uh, possibly reuse that uh, graphical LCD it's a PC 3721WN but you search that or you get us some brokers so might be hard to find the equivalent or a data sheet for that one but you keep it just in case and another really simple polycom and the good thing about this phone is that couple of screws on the back easy and quick and these pop off you can salvage the parts too easy Here's an interesting alternative to screws um, because of course uh, screws take uh, time and effort to actually uh, punch in. There's just a standoff behind there and that's just like a hot melted uh, you know, rubber or uh, something like that and that just keeps the board off the standoff there. And we have one of ourselves a uh, chip on glass uh, COG um, display. Not quite as usable as the uh, 0.1 inch headers but uh, certainly yet another keeper. The problem with a product like this, with that huge uh, Texas Instruments uh, BGA in there, not quite sure what that is, T&E or something, but anyway, um, yeah, look, you know, look at all the uh, components. They've got maybe some 0603s, um, you know, some 0402s down in there, double-sided load, very dense, all that sort of stuff. That just costs more to make than the other phones we've seen. Getting a bit sick of Polycom by now. You can see the attention to detail on the uh, acoustics. They've got uh, rubber surrounding this dual rubber surrounding this electric mic in there. Nice. TMS uh, 320 DSP again and that uh, Micro chipset. The other one was a Micro, but it was uh, rebranded some other name, but basically the same part. Scored another one of these uh, identical graphics LCDs, and you'll notice that they've um, probably learnt their lesson here. Look, they've gone for the reverse mount SMD LEDs, even though they're using the uh, BGA package over here. They've decided to not, uh, you know, we can get away without using any bypass caps on the back, so only single sided load, except for that connector down there. And a Nortel Networks uh, Ethernet phone. Once again, you could reuse this. I don't have the power adapter or uh, stuff for it, so that makes it a bit difficult. You put uh, likely uh, power over Ethernet as well. Made in Australia again. Beautiful. This is the I2004 model NTEX00. This microphone's really interesting. You can see like a micro grill or something down there in like a big horn arrangement with the standard electric mic at the bottom like that but they've gone to a bit of trouble there to do that they've decided to do their switches as membranes there so we've just got the uh, carbon button on an extended membrane coming out there i don't know about that we've got ourselves a bona fide bodge there look at that it looks like a uh, decoupling bodge well, we keep seeing the same things over and over tms320 dsp We've got an Epson Micro over here, and uh, here we've got a uh, net silicon uh, device for the uh, Ethernet interface. And check out the uh, light pipe they've got there, half pipe, going over just to light that uh, red light on the front. Gone to a bit of effort. And there it is. Not often you get one of those, so we'll keep that. Might be usable for something. Unfortunately, the LCD on this one, not really reusable. It is a complete uh, custom job by the looks of it. And we've got the heat bar connectors down here. So, you know, we can just peel that off. And, well, once you do, um, not really reusable, unfortunately. Check out this piece of engineering uh, acoustic porn. I've never seen them, anyone go to this much trouble in a phone. Look at this, not like a Mylar... Uh, cone, not just a crappy uh, paper cone speaker in there, but it's got a rubber acoustic seal in this, completely sealed, like six screws there, and then a um, a, a vent port on the back for uh, presumably better uh, bass performance. That's just one complete assembly they've popped in there, and this uh, port vents out the uh, top of the case here, like un oh the bottom of the case uh, down near the desk unbelievable amount of effort for the acoustics but hey thumbs up somebody went to town on that guild in the lily and lucky last a different manufacturer cisco systems ip phone 7960 what's inside this puppy we'll find out well this one's actually a bit old school compared to uh some of the others look we've just got uh you know molex connector type wiring up to a board here soldered directly through none of the flat flex we've seen um, we do the lcd uh, once again probably uh you know not hugely reusable because uh you know it's this um instead of being a hot bar attachment soldered down you could reuse it because it's a press fit but then you've got to you know uh push it down onto your board contacts we've got some uh, shielding 
over this. So they've, you know, taken themselves seriously there. And we've got ourselves a, uh, a daughter board here just for the uh, Ethernet interface and power. Phew, go figure. We do have some form of part number on there, but, you know, the odds of reusing this, uh, you know, probably more effort than it's worth. And we could desolder this, but uh, screw that. Literally. Ta-da! We're in like Flynn. And for your trouble, you cop a couple of big-ass custom Cisco chips. We've been mooned. So we end up with a box of crap and a box of useful stuff. Beautiful. Catch you next time. And don't forget the small kiddie screws.